thanks a lot uh, for being there. Uh, and today it's, it's a very special and very interesting topic that we have um, about making a factual uh, digital transformation program and especially data um, architecture and data digital transformation program. So a lot of enterprises have been moving into this kind of transformation program. Um, and for usually for the same reason, first for generating new revenue, for decreasing the current costs, and for getting better engagement with their customer. However, um, there are plenty of challenges when you start this kind of, of transformation. And that would be interesting, by the way, to have here the first poll to evaluate what are your challenges when you are starting or if you are starting this kind of program, what are the main challenges you are facing? Can you just please answer the first poll and then we can have a, a short uh, discussion for commenting these results. So till now we have three answers. So it is, uh, the three are facing the overall uh, overall running cost due to the data complexity. Good. Yeah, uh, yeah a lot of people are, are, are focusing on, on this one and I can completely understand that. And by the way, uh, Carmen and I, we had a discussion uh, two months ago about the fact that this is one of the most important driver actually, the, the cost of complexity and, and the, running, the overall running cost. I will, I will continue. So here we can um, already see that actually the, the overall running cost is one of the uh, most important challenge people here are, are facing and data quality as well and time to market. And that's, that's really the, 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 the changing part of the job here. You are starting a digital transformation. You have to support the business and strategic direction. And at the same time, you are facing challenges. And especially when you look at, at data, and, and usually data is at the core of a digital transformation program. And if you look at especially on, on, on data issue and data challenges, uh, here we have a, a summary of the, um, of the main challenges from a data viewpoint when you look at the IT and, and digital transformation program. And usually you find issue like how to access the data, what does my data mean? I have some table there and my data scientists need to work with, but I have no idea of what this field means. Data quality, and, and some of you have um, raised that point in the poll. The fact that you have data um, replicated among your system and you have no control about this replication, and then the consistency is not guaranteed. Security, legal aspects, compliance with GDPR in Europe, it's, it's something very complicated to set up if you have this uh, data among your enterprise. Um, the, the engagement of customers sometimes mean that you would like to have a really short uh, time to interact with the user, and that means that batch is sometimes not really especially adapted. Um, of course, the, the skills and the time to market and the overall costs. And these are the main challenges when we discuss with customers that they are raising when uh, doing their digital transformation. So as I told you, the main challenge here will be how to, in the same time, supporting the business strategy in the same time while dealing with these challenges and, and resolving them. So how do we usually do that? Well, in, in, in one hand, you have the repository of advanced use case and business demands. And this somehow represents the business strategy. Usually most of the people here, especially in IT, translates the business strategy into a set of target use cases. And, and you have this repository of use cases. But on the other hand, in the IT side, what you have, well, you have pieces of solution, building blocks that can be used for building your, your and supporting your strategy. And I can cite, well, data architecture pattern like Data Hub, Data Integration, Data Mesh, you name it. Um, technical Data Enabler, which is a kind of exhaustive map of all the functional components you need to support this kind of specific use case. And these are actually all the functions you need to implement from a technical point of view, but 
also from an information management point of view and data governance. And of course, you have this list of technologies. And the key question to articulate for someone who starts a data program will be, well, how to, in the same time, support my repository of use case, resolve my challenges, and how to make then factual the roadmap. Where do I start? Where I should start from, from, from the technical point of view, for which component, from data management, from architecture pattern? What are the path? What are the different solutions? And what are the, the path? What is the path I need to take to get my, my transformation uh, program supported? And one way to do that would be to evaluate your current state in terms of maturity. Um, if you evaluate your current state with regard to the data information management, um, well, you will be able to, to, to make a more factual the target you would like to reach and then to make more factual the roadmap and the choices. And that will be a solution actually for bridging the gap between your repository of advanced use cases and the technical solution and how to roll out everything. But well, it looks like magic actually. How can we do that? How can we evaluate your current state, the target, and then making factual the roadmap? That's the key questions. And this is where the data uh, maturity model, uh, data management maturity model comes into the picture. So this is not something um, we invented out of the blue, actually. If you look at the state of the art, there are many different models, um, either from academia or from the industry. Um, and, and they are all there with specificities and with very special aspects. Before continuing, I would like you to answer to the second poll, because I, I would be very interested to know whether you, you have uh, ever use this kind, used this kind of, of model for evaluating your, your maturity. So can you please uh, answer the, the poll number two? But uh, three from the seven out from seven said that they not that did not have uh, used a maturity model. And we have two having used Gardner information management maturity model. And um, then we have DAMA and CMMI. Okay, so no, nobody till now having used the IBM data governance uh, council maturity okay. model. Interesting. Okay. Good. So what we did, well, we did the work of, of any uh, scientists uh, here. We did not invent out of the blue a new model. We considered actually the 22 model from the state of the art we have listed here, and we compiled uh, all of them. We took the best of breed of each of them for rebuilding a new model. And then we end up with this uh, data uh, maturity model, data management maturity model. So we end up with 14 areas of capabilities segmented into four uh, categories, enterprise and intent, data management, systems, and processes. So I will not um, delve into detail of, of each capabilities. You can just read the, the name, and I think the name are, are self-meaning. Uh, um, and if you have any question on, on specific capabilities, uh, I can answer them at the end. Uh, at the end of the presentation here. So I will explain you how we can make this model actionable, because I really believe that this is one of the main difference with the existing state-of-the-art models, is that here you have an actionable model that not only gives you the current state, but gives you actually a way to infer, to build the roadmap of the program to, uh, to roll out. Let me show you that. Well, something very important we build uh, from the model is that not only the capabilities, but also the, um, the, the dependency graph between the different capabilities. And you will see that, that this dependency graph will help us a lot when we need to build the strategic roadmap and how to infer it from the target states. So keep in mind that we have this graph of dependencies and you will see later on how it can be used. 
Um, so we um, studied a lot the scoring level as well because it's not always easy to define well what kind of score scale you are going to take. And here we decided to use this five level um, uh, score um, scale with no capabilities, initial, developing, defined, managed, and optimized. And with in between the two and three here, the clear separation between, well, uh, 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 let's say a, a running mature environment and, an, an, let's say, developing um, a maturity model here. So this is just to, to give you a hint about uh, the, scale, the scale we used and the, um, the rating uh, we used. Okay, so when you have this model, when you evaluate your current state, this is presented actually like this. When you have uh, your five level of maturity, you have this grid of dependency, and you will see after why we call it grid of dependencies, and you have your uh, 14 uh, area of capabilities. And we can then rate uh, each of the capabilities with the defined uh, level. And then the first, question will be, okay, but how do you define this AZ situation? How do you define my, my current state and my current uh, maturity model? And here, well, our main asset here is an exhaustive questionnaire. So we have a list of questions for each of the 14 area of capabilities. And it's not just five questions, it's, it's a, an exhaustive list of questions. And with that list of questions, we're able to calculate quite accurately, actually, your, your data maturity um, level score. Uh, the second element here is the methodology. Um, we choose to have interviews of a subject matter experts. And what we do here is, is we, we define actually a key resource plan with defining actually which uh, key resource and which key people should be uh, interviewed. And then we have a complete rollout of interviews and, and discussion with these people. And, and here, there is something important here. It's not simply asking questions and, and just writing down the answer. You need to have people who have experience in data. Because here you have a risk is to, to have biased answer. The fact that the person in front of you maybe perceive the question differently or have a different viewpoints. And it's up to you when you interview someone to be able to, well, to challenge the answerer, to take different viewpoints, to be sure that the answerer is, um, is, is coherent and, and consistent with the other, the other answers. And this is something that you need to, to organize. It's not some just simply giving the, uh, a web form when just people just answer questions. Then um, in step two, we define the target situation. And that's a tricky one because defining the target situation is not easy. We could actually use the first questionnaire, but that's useless because if you ask people about what will be actually the level of information management they would like to reach, they have just no idea. However, what we can do is starting from the strategic repository of use cases, the advanced use cases, the target use case they would like to reach with the business strategy. But starting from there, you still don't have the link with the level of maturity. So what we did here is that we developed methodology first to get the use cases first. And then we developed um, this entire uh, technical enabler map. So what we call the technical enabler map is the exhaustive architecture view of all the functional and technical enabler you need to put in place to support a full-fledged uh, data program. And from there, we map actually the technical enabler map. We map each of the components. We map it to the level of maturity. So we have different, actually, um, we have different view of this technical enabler map. And we are able actually to, to take this technical enabler, um, the set of technical functional enabler, and to map it to a specific maturity level. So coming back to the use case, what we do, we take the top 10 use cases, we develop the high level architecture for defining which technical and functional enabler you need to support this use case. And then we just look at the map between the technical enabler 
and the level of maturity for defining then which kind of maturity level need to reach for supporting this use case. So by doing that, we have a factual way to define a target score in your maturity model. And so now that we have the current state and now that we have the target state, the question will be, how can you use that for making this actionable? And making it actionable means how to infer the roadmap. And this is where the dependency between capabilities will play a role. Now that we have here the target of um, the target score that we'd like to reach, and because that we know that for reaching that target, they have some, it has some dependencies to other area. Well, we are able to calculate this sequence of um, of steps you need to implement on each area to get there. And it's not only just giving you the information that, well, from data quality and validation need to be, uh, you are at two and you need to get three. No, it's not that. Because we have this mapping between the level of each um, capabilities here, with the technical enabler map and with the information management framework, we're able to calculate which functional components, technical components, and data governance artifact you need to put in place step by step in a sequence to build and to get your target level here. So it's really making factual actually your roadmap about technical component, functional component, uh, and, and information management artifacts. Just to give you a hint about this technical enabler map, well, this is the kind of, of map that we have. And here it's a kind of, of exhaustive list of functional role and technical components you would need to put in place to be sure that you cover uh, the different functions of your system. And this is something we have built over the last six years by working on, on different data program and, and digital transformation program in different um, areas. And we did the same for the information management. Uh, then we just, we don't only have the component for the technical component for data engineering, but we have actually the, the data governance component that could be put in place uh, in the roadmap as well. So this is the kind of, um, of result that you have per category, you have the score, uh, source, uh, as is and, and target. And this is for different um, here categories. This is very interesting to see where you, you think you are. It's, it's very interesting. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, data governance seems to be uh, the last mat less mature till now, the company. Uh, yes, the culture and people also. So, this is, uh, yeah, culture and people seems to be uh, a really a challenge in the companies. Uh, for the most mature seems to be architecture and infrastructure. Th that's very interesting because um, culture and people and data governance, these are the, the usual suspect actually. And, and they are the most important as well. Um, starting a data program and, and a data uh, transformation program without having a proper data governance is, is really dangerous for controlling the costs and for controlling your program actually. Um, so that, that's very interesting. And architecture and infrastructure to be the most mature, that's good. That's really good because this is something that we need to put in place. Of course, this, this will be the plan of your foundations. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Guillaume. So um, which type of people put you around the table from business, IT, comex, etc.? So uh, who are the people uh, that uh, which we uh, you, you put on around the table? Uh, I suppose it's uh, to validate the model, to construct the model, or is to uh, for the evaluation. So at the moment that we apply the model. For, for the to be, um, it, it's usually starting from people from the comics is, is, is not a bad idea. Um, and we need to have people mainly from business, the one who think what will be the next business strategy. Um, and then people being able to explain what could be the business case or the business use case they would like to, to have in the future. 
and the, 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 the game here, it's really to guess the ambitions uh, of the customer. Uh, for the Aziz, well, it really depends on, on which uh, capabilities you are looking for. And, and each and, and single capabilities will have a, a specific set of people that we're going to, um, uh, to, to, to interview. It could be people from IT. It could be people from digital transformation office or data office. It could be people from business. Uh, it, it's really depending on, on, on each category. We have actually a list of profiles we would like to interview for each of the capabilities. But the objective here is to, well, to be able to browse as large as possible to, to, get, um, to get most of the point of view, but still scoped into the area of capabilities. And in terms of roadmap, well, this is the kind of, of, uh, of technical roadmap you can have here. What kind of things you need to put in place uh, and here it's only on technical components. We didn't include here the information management artifacts that could be part of the of the roadmap. And by defining here, well, phase, you are on each phase, what kind of um, functions you enable. And then we are able to have this phasing uh, of the different um, elements in a roadmap. So it's really a way to make factual, actually, the list of elements you are going to, to, to deploy. And in here, it's, well, it's focused on technical enabler, but as I told you, uh, we usually add here the information management artifact and the organizational uh, element as well, all the, um, uh, the change uh, program you need to put in place in parallel of your uh, program. Okay, so, so this is uh, how we approach this. We usually have one sprint uh, of one month per phase. Step one is the uh, as is uh, evaluation, the target evaluation. And here is where we do the high level architecture of the different use case. Uh, we map that to the technical uh, functional enabler map and the information management artifacts. And we define then the roadmap. OK, so I'm, I'm really interested actually in, in going forward with you, uh, especially about, um, about discussing uh, about your situation. Uh, so if you're interested, let's just organize a workshop where we can discuss about your challenges, your ambition, your objective, and then how we can apply this kind of methodology uh, with you. Just, um, it's a great teamwork, so thanks to the team here. And uh, we are preparing here a future works uh, in, a co in collaboration with the Solvay Business Schools, uh, where we are uh, preparing here a paper um, presenting the model and how do we position uh, this model comparing to the state of the art. Thank you, Savri. Thank you very much. Um, so we have already a, a very interesting question uh, from Nicola uh, about the data governance. Uh, uh, okay, and so the question is how to to push or how to get in the picture in the roadmap uh, the the data governance, which is uh, really uh, an important part uh, of the data program. Uh, without uh, putting at risk uh, the whole program? This is uh, shortly uh, the question of Nicola. Well, it, it's an excellent question. And, and um, this, is, this is how we approach it. Well, you can argue, and, and I, well, this is something that I've done actually um, uh, many times in the last five years. You can argue to a customer then, well, you need to put governance in place because without any control, um, you are going to have a higher cost. But except that is just a claim, it's really difficult actually to quantify exactly. Uh, and this is why uh, using this kind of model actually is, is, is very easy because you can just factually show that, okay, if you would like to, to reach that uh, set of use cases, you need to reach this level of maturity to control your cost. And this level of maturity includes uh, this artifact of governance these specific things, like an enterprise data model, like the ability to uh, to 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 have the, the tracing of the data, the lineage, and and it's it's much easier to convince when you have somewhere um, a map that shows you that you need to get there to support the the, um, the strategic objectives. Um, otherwise, a, other option would be to consider the legal aspect. Legal is always the um, the the way uh, the uh, um, the way to enter in that data governance game, because most of the time legal constraints force you to have a proper data governance. Um, and that would be for me the second option to consider. 
maybe awaiting the next question. So I'm going to, to ask a very generic question. So just to, to clarify and to be sure that uh, we understand correctly. Um, if we are looking to this methodology compared with the other methodology, what differentiates this, this methodology? What, what do we need to, to, to retain from, from this one? What is, in fact, the, the really the differentiator? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, so um, indeed, the question is valid. We have 22 models in the set of the art and maybe other that we didn't consider here. And what are the main differences? Well, I would say that, that the main difference uh, is the actionable aspect. The fact that it's not only a way to score your current state, but it's also a way to make it actionable within a roadmap. The final delivery, actually, is not really your level of maturity. The final delivery is uh, where I am, where I'm going to, and what are the, the, what is the roadmap to get there? It, that's really the actionable aspect. Um, and, and how we can do that is because of our second differentiator is this link between the maturity model and all the technical and functional enabler and the information management artifact. So just to be clear, when I speak about information management artifact, I'm speaking about uh, data lineage, uh, data profiling, data quality, uh, enterprise data model, all the things, data catalog, data dictionary, all the things you need to put in place from an information management point of view to govern your data. And I think one of the key differentiators here is this link between these uh, 14 um, area of capabilities and this list of technical and functional enabler and information management artifacts. And finally, the third uh, difference will be, I think, into the methodology and the way we ask the questions. Um, first, the questions, I think, is, is the core asset because then we have a factual way to evaluate your score. And the way we ask the question to be sure that we minimize the bias. And I think that that's really important. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Sabri. So I, I uh, have uh, understood it's about action, actionable. So where we are, I am where I'm going to, and with a uh, roadmap is about uh, this this link or mapping that you did uh, between this maturity model with the different components. So allowing you to to go to this uh, roadmap and to, to really build this roadmap to put in place and uh, really very concrete. Uh, and, and finally is, uh, of course, about knowledge experience you have in uh, guiding and proceeding with these interviews. Exactly. And we have uh, a remark or question about from Guillaume saying, yeah, we are, it's about cutting the elephant in pieces. Yes, it's a way of... Uh, yeah, yeah, Guillaume, thank you for your question. So, so it's a really good question. So here it's, um, um, so when you, when you design this kind of global program, do you have to design it globally with the, 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 the big uh, transformation program or to an iterative and incremental uh, way. Um, that's a really good question, actually. And, and to be accurate, um, I like both approach. I like the fact that you design a program that has a clear target vision. However, what we have done with, uh, with some customer is, is when you design actually the first steps, when you define the first steps you need to uh, deploy to roll out, we focused actually and we rearranged, we, uh, pre we, we, we put higher uh, priority on small steps that gets the most of the value because especially when you start a program you need to show progress and value uh, and this is the the small step approach step by step you go toward your target's uh, vision the roadmap is there for giving you a cap a direction you know somewhere to go to um, but you will focus first on the first steps that are the low hanging fruit actually the smaller steps that brings the biggest value and that's very important to do that because if you just blindly um, apply your roadmap without focusing on that, you can spend actually months before uh, and perhaps more before getting value. And, and, and this is a high risk for the management to continue um, paying to something that doesn't show any value. So both of them, the roadmap is there for the direction and for the target vision and target objectives. And the smaller steps should be agile in a way that you can put in a higher priority 
the smaller steps that brings the biggest value. I, I would be very interested in the in the future uh, to to discuss with you about um, about how do you see this kind of model in in your um, in your enterprise. And and I have a question for you, by the way, and you can answer it through the chat. Um, I discussed uh, recently with a customer about this model. And he told me that, well, actually, the value is not really on evaluating the model on the entire enterprise, on the entire um, uh, at, at the enterprise um, level, but rather at at different initiatives. So, for instance, I don't know. We have um, the initiative of data governance. Let's apply the model only on data governance. Uh, we are we are starting uh, I don't know something like a, a risk evaluation and let's focus this model only on the risk evaluation step. Do you think that it, it's it's more valuable to evaluate this model on smallest area and then probably to to go from on one area to to other to another, or just to consider the the model at the enterprise level for having the the complete high level picture? What do you think? You can answer by the chat if you want. Ah, voilà, Nicola. I use usually uh, those uh, maturity rating in a fractal way due to the different silos. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting. Um, uh, I forgive me, Nicola. That, that's interesting. So, so do you do that because uh, today th there are silos and that makes impossible to make the model? But you would like to do that at the enterprise scale. Or, or, or it's it's uh, on purpose that you do that on, on in a fractal way. Start small and scale up. Uh, okay, so uh, up up the enterprise level. So the idea for Nikola is uh, uh, okay. Uh, line of business, line of business. I suppose it's uh, is the abbreviation. So the idea is start at a line of business level and then then scale up. In, in, in what well, I, 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 by the way, fully agree on that. So, um, if if the company is too wide, I will start indeed by line of business because this is where you you, well, this is where you start actually looking because line of business anyway. When you look at the maturity in terms of some categories, will be on data governance or on the on the process and and systems. You will quickly go at the IT level actually, and even though you you scope it to the business. You will quickly have to evaluate the underlying requirement to get there. Uh, yes, indeed, and we have also a reaction from Vincent uh, saying initiative sit in an enterprise-wide scheme, uh, granularities, scales, and nestings have to be considered. Yeah, indeed. So I think it's on the same scope. So, so, so I agree actually with 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 both of the way of thinking. So. If you evaluate the model on on initiative or on the restricted scope, it's not the same purpose as evaluating that at the enterprise level. When you do that at the enterprise level, you you really would like to have this complete entire digital transformation program and to articulate the different um, departments and business units of your of your company. If you do that on if you do that on on specific initiatives or on on a restricted scope. The idea there will be indeed to start small because you don't have the ability to align everyone in the first step. And this is rather by, by no, it's not by choice that you do that. You do that for starting small and to be sure that step by step, you have the ambition to align everyone. That will be perhaps easier in the first step, but that will be as well a bit more harder later on to align everyone. Perfect. So. Um, for me, it's fine. I think we 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 discussed the question here. And um, my last one here: if if you have any question on the model, on the way we proceed, or if you are curious about how it could be applied to your own environment, just don't hesitate to uh, drop me a mail, uh, and we can discuss that together. Good. Thank you to you, and I think Thank that. You there is no yes. other question we can close it here then okay yes thank you very much for your participation and uh, so please uh, please ask us questions so continue to uh, to ask questions continue to to share with us your your challenges so this is the goal really to 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 keep this interaction also after the webinar exactly thanks perfect
Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.